Hello YouTube. Today we're going to do another voltage uh, drop test with a 1100 watt inverter in an RV off three 12 volt batteries in parallel. We're going to use this toaster oven as about a thousand watt toaster oven. I think it draws about 850 watts when we're using it. So I just unplugged the camper. Uh, we're at 12.8 volts. I'm sure that will settle to 12.7. Hydrometer test shows fully charged. And uh, we're going to see what our voltage drop on this. This is uh, more stable than uh, the other day. I tried it with the microwave, but uh, it just has too much, too many watts to uh, to run off the inverter. Okay. So, I think I'm going to run this toaster oven for um, 10 minutes or so. Alright, for reference we're 12.8 and we're going to turn this on now. Uh, I think we actually, I'm going to put stay on. We're on a toast here. Alright, and we drop down to 12, 11.9. Okay, let's run that a while. I'll come back every few minutes and see how we're doing here. And this test is at 100% state of charge. Uh, I'm gonna get the batteries down to around 75% and we're gonna uh, do this test again to see uh, what my drop will be. So we're about one volt drop basically from 12.8 to 11.9. 11.8 now we're reading, so that's about a one volt uh, drop, I would say. And just for reference, we're pulling 860 watts out of this inverter for the toaster oven. 850. And for reference again, we are tied to the truck and the two door cell batteries right there. It's only been about two minutes now. The uh, toaster oven is still on. Um, and just to note, this inverter kicks off, uh, I think, a 10.6 volt warning light, a warning beat sound, and a 10 volt disconnect. And normally this toaster oven wouldn't be on 100% like this. I think it will kick off for temperature, but normally cooking uh, Elio's pizza or something like that, it... it cycles on and off and and we don't set the timer it's like a 20 minutes not even 15 minutes and we're done now if i had solar of course i'd be pumping amps into it um so it kind of be a, a moot point right um but this is just running off the batteries now no no uh, charging coming in and just also a note, you probably can't see it, when you do draw uh, high amps off the batteries, they do uh, bubble just like you were charging them. Um, probably can't see, it's a very small uh, type of bubbling. It's about seven minutes in, we're still, uh, uh, the toaster oven hasn't turned off, we're still drawing a little bit more wattage, 870 watts, about seven minutes into the test. Uh, just went off on temperature. I'm sure uh, took seven minutes for it to to kick off on temperature, but it will start right back up uh, once uh, the thermistor cools down. And there it goes right back on again. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, we are at the ten minute mark. I'm gonna run this for fifteen minutes, and uh, we are at eleven point seven volts. It just kicked off on temperature. It will kick on shortly, but I'm gonna run it 15 minutes. When I got a little, not a sad face, but a grin. What's he trying to tell me? Okay, this is exactly 15 minutes of the toaster oven running nonstop. We're at 11.6 volts. And I'm gonna just shut it down. And I'm going to just let this rest a minute 
and see what final voltage I get. I'm gonna go out and do a hydrometer test and see if I get the batteries down to 75%. That should recover a little bit right there. Hopefully to 12.4, uh, which should be like 75%. Um, I'll be back in a bit. So I didn't get the batteries too low with that 15 minute test. They went from 12.75 to about 12.65. I got a lot of juice to go. Let me run them down a little more. That's pretty level there. Uh, hard to tell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're at 12.6. That says 12.5, but it's 0.1 volt uh, off. So that hydrometer um, reading make, makes sense. Um, okay. I'm going to uh, run this load here some more until I get the batteries down to 75% uh, state of charge. I'll be back. And I just want to note on this hydrometer, I, uh, let me see, where's my finger? I never let them get down to uh, 1200 here, right here. Uh, that's about 50% right there once it gets that low. 1225 is about 75%. So once I start hitting the blue here, I, uh, I know I need to recharge the batteries. So uh, we're getting them down a little bit. I mean, it takes a long time to discharge these three batteries. Um, okay, like I said, I'm I'm running a uh, still running 800 and 70 watt load. It kicks on and off uh, through the thermistor, but uh, that's the best load I got uh, at this time. Let's see that kicks right back on in like a few seconds. There, oh, there's my 19 watts. And there it goes back up. Okay, I'll be back. Exactly one half hour running this toaster oven. I'm at 11.5 volts here on draw 11.4. And um, I'm cranking away. See, it goes off on uh, temperature. There's nothing I could do to control that. It's going to go on and off. I wish I had a constant draw. It's probably not good drawing this many I think is about 70 amps I'm drawing from the battery 850 watts um, all right let me go uh, check the hydrometer now it's been a half hour running this 115 I know it gives them time to recover when uh, it kicks off Okay, this is the one half hour mark. Looks like we're making a dent in the batteries. I think another 15 minutes I should get down to the uh, 1225 mark. I think it's going to drop significantly now. Um, I think it's going to drop pretty fast now in the next 15 minutes. Um, okay, I'll be back. Okay, 45 minutes running this toaster oven. We're at 11.0 volts, 11 volts. 10.6 the alarm should start going off um, I'm not sure what this will recover at I'm just gonna go check the truck battery and make sure it's down uh, in voltage also I mean it should settle around 12.3 I would think when this is all kicks off all right let me go check that out I'll be back okay this is the truck battery 12.25 so I ran this battery down at 12.2, 12.3. That battery, starting battery, should be good. All right, so here's where we're at. 45-minute uh, test. We're a little below 12.50 on the hydrometer. This was running that toaster oven 45 minutes. So even though we're reading 12.2 voltage, I think that will recover because the hydrometer reading shows 12.50, which I believe that's, uh, I got to look on my chart. 
I'm going to run this another 15 minutes. I don't know if the um, the acid in the battery has to uh, uh, equalize or something, or there's a delay. I'm not sure, but this is the voltage, and this corresponds with the, roughly the voltage I'm getting at the batteries, too. But the specific gravity doesn't show that it should be reading 12.2. Okay, this reads 12.2 volts, probably about 12.3. A specific gravity reads a little below 12.50, which is just below 90%, I think. So the voltage and the specific gravity don't uh, jive. So I'm going to run this another 15 minutes. And I'm going to believe the uh, hydrometer over the voltage. I just started this uh, next 15 minute test to get to one hour. Um, just a note, we were at 12.2. We're about 11, 1, 11. So I'll be back 15 minutes. And then I'll check the specific gravity and we'll see where we're at. I'll be back. Okay, so a little into this test here. I'm at 11 volts here. But I got the alarm going off. Um, and I just started this test. So I must be below 10.6 on uh, the inverter. I'm going to go out and check that. It's still running though. The alarm's going off. It won't shut down till 10 volts. Okay, so with that said, I think when that alarm goes off, that's a good indicator for me to stop the test. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill it now. I'm gonna give it a few minutes and um, see what the batteries recover at and take a final hydrometer test. So basically, when we're boondocking, I hit that alarm. And my problem is, uh, my problem was trying to recharge the batteries um, for the next day. But uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I did a test of all the cells in the batteries, every one, and they all read uh, between 1225 and 1250, except this cell. This cell is a little lower, you see here. Um, so maybe I got a bad cell coming on. Here, you see that reading there. It's just above the 1225 mark. And I'll just show another cell. And this is where all the rest of them read pretty much. pretty low well that's that's about the same maybe they're all settling a bit and they're reading the true uh, voltage uh, specific gravity let me just uh, check another one this is probably not the best hydrometer I think maybe there's a lag with the uh, specific gravity because I checked the ones on the end there and they were a bit higher. Um, I got no load on it now. I shut everything down. All right, let me go back and test uh, the other battery. I'll be back. Well, I think what I got is that battery over there is uh, getting shot because these cells are a lot higher, you could see, specific gravity wise. Um, so maybe that's, maybe that's an issue. Um, let me see. So that was reading off the top layer. And once you mix it, once you mix it, mix it around. hand here. Let me just try to get this level. I don't know. I'm 
this one reads 1250. higher than the other battery. This battery reads 1250, the other one's 1225. Let me just try to sell down the end here. Let's see what we get here. I mean, I try to mix it up good. I get it in there, mix it, squirt it a couple times, get to the bottom, get it all mixed up, and let it settle. And hold it level. Okay. Now, I'll just go back and check that one again. So yeah, a bit of a difference on the two batteries, you could see. Um, I don't know, this is the first time I really did a test like this, so you guys tell me. And just another crazy tidbit here. Um, the truck batteries. This truck battery, so didn't really pull from this battery too much. It's a little lower. Um, you know, let me just try to get a good reading here and mix this up some. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty level there. So I didn't really suck any power out of this one. It's only one cell. I'm sure they're all going to be the same. Should probably really get a better hydrometer, right? So, this is what I'm dealing with. Okay. Okay, we settled at 12.2 here. The truck battery is 12.8 four or five I think it's more I read it at the seven pin but you saw the hydrometer on there um, the conclusion is I really don't know I think one battery is uh, getting a little weaker than the other one um, probably time for some new batteries and because I didn't pull enough amps off the truck battery through the seven pin it might be safe to say we should eliminate that battery and just go 6 volt uh, toaster oven like I said we could I could easily cook in here I don't need a toaster oven uh, the trouble with that my wife can't like the pilot and that's why she doesn't like the oven <laughs> she's not used to having a pilot light and as far as coffee I got the, the percolator right there I'm gonna get a better one I think that's easier to uh, uh, use okay okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just see what amps I get off the truck at uh, this voltage I'm at 12 through here settled that's 50% according to the voltage might be 12.3 because of voltage drop. Um, I'm going to see what amps uh, I could get out of the truck and out of my uh, charge wizard there with my uh, amp meter here. I just want to turn this on a second uh, before I do that just to see where I am now that the battery's rested for probably 15 20 minutes. So. I just want to see the voltage drop with these uh, 12 volt batteries. I think it might be time for new batteries. And this is why I'm torn between 12 volts or 6 volts. Because if I am at 50% and I'm running this load now, you see my voltage drop. Uh, there, there goes the alarm. So you know that's reading 12.6. And, and that's my story here, but it will keep going. It, it won't shut off, but I got to deal with that stupid alarm And this happens every morning when I'm boondocking And my wife tries to make coffee in the morning But I got those now out there 
So I might not have that problem anymore. Okay, let's turn this off. Let's turn this off and let's see uh, what kind of amps I could get out of the truck and what kind of amps I get out of that. I'll do the truck first for a brief minute. Okay, there's a ghost amperage there. I'm just gonna start the truck and see what we get. Okay, with dead batteries, the truck's putting 16 amps in. Not bad. And that's the truck on the umbilical. So that's the kind of amps you could get when your batteries are dead from the truck. This truck, anyway. Shut that down. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna go unplug the inverter, turn the inverter off, and I'm gonna plug it into the Charge Wizard converter and see what amps I could get the initial charging. Yeah, that little run on the truck, what was that? 30 seconds? Uh, brought the voltage up a little bit, got a smiley face. All right, I got the camper plugged in. Amp meters out there. I'm going to turn the converter back on and then go out and see what amps. This should just stay in uh, boost mode 14.4. Yep. Let's see the amps outside. Okay. We're showing uh, 40, 43 amps here. Let me just zero this out. 40, 43, 44 amps going into the batteries. How long is that gonna stay there for? I don't know, we'll see when it starts tapering. Um, I'm not gonna really do this test, but I will let you know uh, when it starts tapering in the time. Okay. Actually, I unplugged the truck uh, battery and I got a little more amps out of it, 45. Actually, I unplugged the truck. Um, makes me more want to go six volt here and just eliminate that whole thing, uh, which is easy to do on the truck. I just have to uh, remove a wire from the other battery, remove the battery, and remove the uh, positive cable from it and just put a fuse into the fuse block so the other battery powers the seven pin here. Really simple to do. And I think that other battery is just a, really a waste. Okay, 15 minutes, we're down to 34 amps on the uh, charge wizard. And we are charging at 14.4 uh, volts. to 13.9 so with that said I don't know what I showed here what I proved I think I proved that I'm gonna go six volts and get rid of that uh, truck battery um, the fan just kicked on it's very low it's not like the old Wafco was really uh, full speed 100% of the time. This thing comes on and varies. Very quiet. And it will probably kick itself off the fan. Just comes on and off when it wants. Yeah, but it is dumping 30 something amps into it. I'm happy with it. Uh, the Wafco, I did get 64 amps out of when it did go into bulk mode. And you see the fan just shut off there. So I think with that and with the solar, I think 6 volt is the way to go. And just uh, don't run any high loads off. I don't know what to expect uh, with voltage drop if I did have to run a high load. But I think the inverter uh, at 10, point, uh, 10 volts shut off is sufficient to get me by for making a 15 minute pizza or something. And I think the solar will uh, cover the amp draw there.
so I shouldn't lag too much much here okay well that's it you guys got any advice for me um, of course uh, I don't know why I keep pushing this button if you guys got any advice uh, let me know put some comments something and subscribe if you can I don't have a lot of subscribers but I like making these videos I don't know if it helps anybody if I help one person out there I I've done my job so with that said have a great day guys talk to you again